Hello everybody. Our next camera is the Canon EOS Rebel 2. Uh, it's from 1992. Uh, it was also known as the 1000S QD. It was a court dates version in Japan. And the EOS 1000N uh, internationally. Uh, it can be pretty confusing. Uh, a site called Flynn Graphics has a great explanation of the different naming schemes. I'll put a link down in the description below. This is a pretty simple but well-rounded camera. Uh, it has a few you know, incremental improvements over 1990's uh, Rebel. Uh, the top shutter speed was increased to 1 2,000th from 1 1,000th. Uh, the autofocus is supposed to be 50% faster. I don't have an original Rebel, so I can't really test that for myself. And this one also has, and this is a good way to tell them apart, uh, real quick, uh, SF on the command dial over here. Uh, that's for soft focus. The command dial is uh, set up kind of in two zones. You have what they call the program image control, I think that's right, and that's this half of the dial. Uh, that has the green zone, which is auto everything, uh, portrait, landscape and sports. The other half of the dial uh, is what they call the creative zone and that's where your more normal modes are. Uh, first it has ISO override and that's nice because DX encoding goes from 25 to 5000 but if you're setting your speed manually it goes from 6 to 6400 and with the old film I was shooting in this I uh, backed it off from 400 to 320 just to compensate for the age of the film. Uh, it's got a self timer, uh, 10 seconds, and that counts down. The next one's a little bit bizarre. It chooses your uh, sound for when the self timer is going. It has a simple beeper where it'll play a little bit of Vivaldi, Beethoven, or Bach. Uh, and then the SF, the soft focus. What it does is it uh, takes two exposures, one properly focused and one deliberately a little bit out of focus, and it gives you kind of a little bit softer, almost like, you know, they used to put gel or hose or something over the lens in movies for aging movie stars. And then it's got the DEP, that's a depth of field mode. That uh, is also on the EOS 750, another old... Uh, EOS camera that I've got. And when you're in that mode, you select what you want the nearest to be in focus, and you have press, and then you get DEP1, and then you have press again. Let me do that again. And then you get DEP2, so that way it sets your near focus, your far focus. And then you take the shot. Obviously, I don't have any film in here right now. And then you get kind of into your more normal modes. You've got manual, aperture priority, shutter priority, and programmed auto exposure. The other controls, there's the input dial here, and they get two buttons on the back. The left is exposure compensation. So when you press that and use the command dial, you can set your exposure compensation. And it goes uh, plus or minus 2 EV in half stop steps. And then the right is partial metering. And bring up the display in here. When you press that, um, it uses a circle inside uh, the viewfinder, the center 9.5%. Instead of using a three zone evaluative metering. The other use of these buttons depends on the context. Um, so if you're shooting in manual, normally the control dial is setting your shutter speed, but if you uh, hold the exposure compensation button, kind of like a shift key, then you're setting your aperture. These are not real popular on the used market. Uh, the Film Photography Podcast talks about it a little bit. People hate on them because they're really plasticky feeling. 
and the main thing, particularly the kit lens, that the, uh, the lens mount is also plastic. But honestly, it's really tough, some kind of polycarbonate. And if you bash this thing bad enough to mangle the lens mount, your camera's toast anyway. Um, so I don't even really think that's a problem. But the nice thing is, because people think, ah, it's a 90s piece of plastic junk, you can pick up a decent camera that you can set to full manual for next to nothing. Make sure it's off here. This guy has a vertically traveling metal shutter, shutter uh, 30 seconds to one two thousandth of a second plus bulb. The film load is super easy. Let me take this off and lock. You just uh, put the guy in here and then bring the leader over to this orange mark. Make sure I'm on my sprockets here. And then close the back. And it does pre-wind, so it sucks all of the film uh, over onto the, to the wind spool. And then as you take images, it pulls it back in. Motorized transport completely, the winding and the rewind. I don't think this guy has mid-roll rewind. I take that back. It's some bizarre take off the lens, press both buttons. Anyway, it's in the manual. It's really convoluted, but you can do it. If you just lean on the shutter button, this thing will do one frame a second until you're out of film. And it's powered, turn this guy back off, by a uh, two CR5 lithium battery. It's a six volt battery. They're a little pricey, but even though this thing is motorized, they last quite a while. That was a used battery I've been testing cameras with, and it worked just fine in this guy. The top display is pretty nice. It shows you the status of your battery, um, whether you have film loaded, how many frames you have left, counting down, and then it also depends on what mode you're in. So if I switch over to aperture priority, it'll show you the aperture in there. And then there's a multiple exposure mode. You press both buttons and you get ME, and then you use the command dial to set how many exposures you want. And it'll keep ME and the number of uh, multiple exposures. And if you decide to bail out of that, just press both buttons together again and set it back to number one and it turns it off. Also if you're using the self timer um, it'll show your countdown in there in addition to beeping or playing Vivaldi or something. Most of this info is also duplicated in the viewfinder. There's a nice little uh, backlit display along the bottom. It also has a dot for uh, autofocus is acquired uh, it's got the partial metering circle. It's got a little square uh, autofocus area in the center. And this uses a pentaprism, not mirrors. So that's actually kind of a step up in features for what was their kind of low-end camera. And with a 50mm uh, lens on it, you get the uh, 0.75x magnification. Not great, but not bad. It's pretty bright, pretty easy to look through, even when I'm wearing my specs. Um, the 2S uh, of this guy had a built-in flash that would pop up here above the pinaprism. Uh, it was guide number 14, that's in meters, at ISO 100. This one doesn't have the flash, so I dug out an old uh, 200E. They do mate, they mention this in the manual for this camera. They weren't the same purchase. And I've got the rubber band on it because the battery door is broken. Take batteries out of things when you put them away. They were so swelled up they actually broke the plastic. And this guy is uh, guide number 20 meters at ISO 100. One thing I don't know if it always holds true, but something that I learned is the first two digits of a Canon flash, that's your guide number in meters at ISO 100. So I looked at quite a few different flashes. And that held true. I'm sure there are probably exceptions to that. But that's a cool, uh, quick and dirty way of figuring out how powerful a flash is. 
you're thinking about buying it, a few things are missing from this camera that I would really love to have. Um, there's no remote and there's no cable release. Not a wired remote, no infrared, nothing. But it does have a bulb mode, go figure. Um, so really all you can do is use the self-timer when this guy's on a tripod, but because the self-timer is on the command dial, if you're using the self-timer, you're always in program auto exposure. And I ran into some problems with that, trying to take pictures of the moon. The other thing, I always love a spot meter. It's not that unusual that for a camera not to have that. And it doesn't have mirror lockup. Even when you do the self-timer, it's not locking up the mirror. It's flipping it up at the time that it trips the shutter. Uh, I shot most of this half roll that I shot using this kit lens that I got with it. It's a 35 to 80, uh, f4 at brightest, at widest, at 35 millimeters, and f5.6 when you're at 80. And they also vary how far they stop down. 35 millimeters, it stops down to f22, and at 80, it stops down to f32. It's eight elements in eight groups. It's not great, but it's an okay walking around lens. Close focus is about a third of a meter. I think, what was that, 1.2 feet. So I've really enjoyed shooting with this. Um, I got it for next to nothing. The strap didn't come with it, but the lens did. I had the flash. So that was a pretty, pretty nice uh, kit that I scored for really, really cheap. The moon shot, I used an old... Uh, Sigma 70 to 300 plus a no name, I think it's CPC uh, 1.7x teleconverter. Um, it's nice to be able to use those because uh, my 60D is really fussy about some of the old equipment. Every now and then, with that Sigma, it'll give uh, you know a lens error and autofocus. Well, it's probably true on this guy too really does not work that well uh, with small f-stops and particularly losing more light with a teleconverter. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do with this guy. It's nice and clean, it works well, but I've got to start thinning the herd, but I will see you then.